Alright guys, how the FBI solves a $1.6 billion Instagram scam. Let's check it out. An Instagram influencer. 1.6 bill, bro. Guys, back in the day, my flawed logic would be like... Yo, it's just like RuneScape money logic, you know what I mean? I, th I thought like my, 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 my psychotic brain had like... It, it thought the RuneScape money was just being, you know, spoke... Like, I thought my money had more... What little money I made from like selling gold back in the day had like uh influence over the world. I don't know, it's hard to explain guys, but let's check it out. Who posted pictures of his lavish lifestyle could spend the next 20 years in a prison cell. Dubai police have once again solved yet another case involving an international online scammer known as Raymond Abbas. Billions of dollars, by the way. But who goes by Hush Puppy on social media. Hush puppy. Guys, has anyone tried hush puppies? Hush puppies are very good and I like hu eating hush puppies. Yeah, platforms. Yeah, FBI taking pictures and everything, guys. Hush puppy was a millionaire Instagram influencer. Successful enough to bag... Guys, look at all those uh, professional photos and stuff, man. Gifts from Fendi. Guys, I never had an Instagram following before. But it's a very active community. Uh, I, I'm going to start posting on Instagram again uh, by next month. Hopefully if I even get paid next month. 21 days until I get paid if I get paid. Gucci and Louis Vuitton. They even sent him custom cakes on his birthday. Snap for... Wait, what? He was living the dream until in 2020. It, it, <laughs> all these big brands sending him stuff. The SWAT team kicked down his door as he slept and seized absolutely everything. His cars, his cash, and a list of his victims' email addresses. Yes, all two million of them. This is the story of Hush Puppy and the mistake that cost him more than 10 years of his life behind bars. Literally kicked his door, like the, the rap song say, like, kick door. They literally kicked down his door, guys, wow. Bars. 10 years, that's bigger than uh, the other guy that, uh... Provided a bunch of free streaming services. The previous year, he'd given an MTV crib style tour of his home to radio personality Daddy Freeze. As guys, who the flip is that? Guys, I don't know who that is, but look at these expensive shoes and everything, man. They gazed at his hordes of designer clothes, Rolls Royces, Ferraris, and no less than four jacuzzis. Guys, if I ever get rich, I don't, I don't think I'll. Go that hard, bro. I probably would if I got super, super giga rich, but... He described the feelings he had about his incredible wealth. My heart is pure. I thought that it was Aiden Ross for a second, but this is... I sleep good at night. When something good happens to me, I know it's because I did good. Not because somebody promised me money that I did not work for, or money that I don't deserve. But what was this work that he was always so cagey about? Yeah, I know, right? Finessing Instagram for 1.6 bill, by the way. How did a poor kid from Lagos become a self-professed billionaire Gucci master? A yeah, Gucci master. And how was he brought down by Instagram and Snapchat? Guys, uh, I'm interested, man. Yahoo Hush boys. Puppy's real name is Ramon Abbas, and he was raised in poverty in Lagos, Nigeria. His father was a taxi driver, and his mother sold bread on the street. And bro, that's cool how he, you know, came up from nothing, guys. Growing up with very little, he coveted wealth and luxury. And when he was old enough, he began a small business, reselling designer clothes from the boot of his car. Designer clothes? Oh, snap. Those are quite expensive, man. In the early two... Not sure if they were counterfeit, but hey. Yeah, do what you gotta do, man, for a living, you know what I mean? Thousands. Cyber cafes began appearing across Nigeria, and the unemployed youth flocked to them. First for- I'm sure everybody likes a cyber cafe. Wouldn't it you guys? I, I totally would. Entertainment. But they got laptops in there? Soon, as a way to make money through on- I'm a fan of laptops, sorry, I got three laptops so far, man. Online crimes like check cashing and romance scams. Oh, snap. So they're, they're, they're scamming on them. The young men used free Yahoo email accounts to run their cons, earning them the nickname Yahoo Boys. They would. Sp <laughs> they started a little uh, 
crime organization are in. Spend hours online in search of Magus, meaning gullible marks, and then days, weeks, or months conning them out of their cash. With few other prospects, Abbas became a keen Yahoo boy, and he soon found success. But then, the Nigerian security forces began cracking down viciously on cybercrime, often beating first and asking questions later. Look at all that money they have, bro. It looks like they came up on bank, bro, doing this. Any young man with a smartphone became a target. So, in 2014, Abbas, along with many other Yahoo boys, fled to Malaysia, a country with more sophisticated internet architecture and law enforcement that was a little laxer against potential cyber criminals. There, he, he had to flee the country already, he man. strived to be the best, and his drive and entrepreneurial spirit propelled him to the top of the game. Dang, he could have been like the, the number one scammer guys in the world, it seems. At this point, he became Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy was Abbas's Instagram handle, and he used it to flaunt his wealth and post motivational messages about breaking out of poverty with time and hard. He said, no Twitter, no Facebook, no Instagram in his bio, guys. Okay, okay. Hard work. I mean, it was maybe Instagram, but... His profits skyrocketed. He splashed his cash on designer clothes, luxury watches, and expensive cars. It was rare to see a post that didn't come with a hashtag for Gucci, Fendi, Versace, or Rolls Royce. He's becoming a, you know, a brand, a... Uh... A brand, uh, someone just pro promotes a brand, it seems, guys. His bio read, Billionaire Gucci Master. Billionaire, oh snap. And the more he flaunted, no Facebooks, no Twitter, it says. His newfound wealth, the faster he gained followers. Oh, now it says, no Tinder, guys. <laughs> At his peak, changing his profile. Over 2.8 million people were viewing his posts about his custom purple Rolls Royce, his flights on private jets, and his Fendi shopping sprees. Yeah, bro. In Nigeria, he'd become a celebrity, and at peak influencer status, his beloved designer brand started gifting. It's so wild to have something like that happen. Like, you're, everybody's just like, you know, is interested in meeting you, and like, you're rich, bro. I, I never had that kind of experience, man. Him everything from trainers to an all expenses paid trip to the Ritz Paris as a VIP guest of Louis Vuitton. Fendi invited him to dine with society's elite, and in one event, Snap. He's up there on the ladder now, it seems. The Kuala Lumpur branch of Versace hosted him, and fellow Instagrammer Samson Oyokunle, and presented them with gifts for being the store's best customers. That is an awesome looking cake, I'm not gonna lie. Abbas celebrated by spending another $20,000 and posting it all on his Instagram. Around the same time, he got close with another. So just get a bunch of money and uh, buy the brands and keep tagging the companies and the the post guys, I guess and that's how he became like a, you know, sponsored by them. It seems another influencer, Ismaila Mustafa, known as Momfa. Together, they showed off their wealth and designer gear, and were even mentioned in the song "Living Things" by Nice. Of course, never heard of that song. No one can be a true influencer without getting pulled into a few online feuds. Some seem stay. I don't know why they always happen nowadays, guys. Aged like his fallout with musician Davido over an accusation that Abbas had skipped out on his tab at a bar in Lagos. But the pair soon made up in a Snapchat video. And he 18k freaking viewers as well, man, that's correct. Each was rewarded with a boost in followers. Not all of his spats- so It's like, almost like a collab at this point. Ended so well though, and in some cases, they threatened to expose him. In one event, he accused rapper Fino of wearing fake watches. This prompted singer Casey to post. Sounds like a, a petty beef at this point. Yo, we got fake fake jewelry. You know, they, they got the same insults on like TikTok about like chains and stuff. Post, you have no credibility, no known source of income, and yet you come on social media to attack hardworking Nigerian musicians with traceable wealth. Really, what do you do for a living? What is your talent? How did you make your money? Snap, he's straight up, uh... I'm in full force, Adam, guys. Money. What brand do you represent? Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission needs to start paying more attention to detail. 
Abbas had shared every trip, meal, and shopping spree with his dedicated followers. But of course, he never shared exactly how he'd achieved his extravagant lifestyle. And when questioned, other influencers basically calling him out at this point. He always said something vague about real estate investment. No one was buying the story. But how was he making his cash? Romance scams can be good for a few thousand, maybe even six figures. But Abbas was clearly pulling in millions. Snap rich. The true source of his wealth was Business Email Compromise Schemes, or BECS. Like many other- Do you think they just sit back and see how he lives his life? Cause they- He seems- Even the other influencers know at this point, you know? Abbas had realized the real money in online fraud wasn't in scamming individuals, but multi-million dollar companies. These crimes are so lucrative that they account for over 40% of funds stolen through fraud. Dang, bro. Scamming actual companies? I thought they were unscammable. And cost $1.8 billion annually. Despite this, we don't hear about BECS in the news very often. Yeah, why don't we, guys? Usually because it's incredibly embarrassing for the companies involved. A typical BEC scam involves hacking into a corporate email address. This can be done through phishing or even guessing at passwords if the company has very lax security measures. Then the scammer will watch and wait for weeks or months until a large invoice comes in. At this point, they can intercept the invoice and mock up a near identical one with Dude. the bank details changed to those of their own account. Alternatively, they can email the intended recipients from an almost identical address, apologizing that the previous account details were incorrect and providing new ones leading to the scammer's account. They may also create fake websites. Wait, are they doing it twice? Businesses, phone hotlines, and identities. Oh. Dang, phishing is still a thing, guys. I think I got my RuneScape account fished, man. All of so they, they sent an email to, like, reset your password, but then it's actually a phishing link. It's a way to convince anyone who may run security checks that the details are legit. Once the money hits the scam account, it's then quickly redistributed to multiple mule accounts, converted into Bitcoin, or used to buy physical goods like jewelry or gold. This launders the money and prevents victims from calling back. Yeah, he's making millions in like one uh, transaction, it seems. Back the funds. For example, in 2019, a New York law firm needed to send a payment of around $922,000 to a client who'd refinanced a piece of real estate. Before wiring the money, a paralegal emailed to confirm where it should be sent. Unknown to her, this email was intercepted, and she soon received a fax telling her to send the money to a different account. Naturally, she checked out- And they're, they're, they're like blocking emails from being sent as well, bro? Oh, no, no. That's too to much. To make sure it was legit by ringing the number on the fax. Her call was answered, and the man on the other end was able to confirm all of the confidential details. Convinced, she sent the money to the new account, which of course, didn't belong to her client, but to Abbas. The person she'd spoken to had been one of his associates, or perhaps the man himself. Uh, guys, he's so starting to call companies doing this, guys. Crimes of this. Not the first, the, the other guy, they, you know, they just start out like a, they just flaunt it all over. Well, like a. Social media, that's interesting. Man. Scale can't be run by an individual. They involve an entire network of scammers, some to set up false bank accounts, some to create fake websites, some to gain access to the email accounts, and others to launder the money. Plus, you need money mules, who are often unwitting people tricked into setting up laundering accounts through romance scams. Abbas, as one of the most successful BEC scammers, had a huge number of connections, including a Canadian money launderer called Galeb Alamari. He was not As, uh, So he'd be like, just on the phone during like an Instagram shoot, he'd be like, oh snap, hold on. One of my scammer friends or something, bro. Normally responsible for transferring the cash into Abbas's account and worked with him on some of his largest scams. Their most high profile heist was that of the Bank of Valletta in Malta, where communicating through Snapchat and Abbas's Hush Puppy 5 account 
the pair attempted to organize the distribution of 13 million euros. A scam had been pulled off by hackers who'd breached the French stock exchange regulator, Autorité des Marchés Financiers. Then, guys, I wonder how he learned all this stuff. So is it like, pro it's probably all online how he learned it, guys, or probably through friends, right? And posing as the regulators, they sent phishing emails to the Maltese bank. When an employee fell for it, the team gained access to the bank's secure payment system and was able to send out millions of euros in undetected payments. Abbas's role was to provide bank accounts able to receive the. They're so rich they don't. It's not even undetected, or did they like a? Uh, oh, there's hacking guys. They probably like deleted the email or something. I don't know, guys. Deposits of millions of dollars without blocks, and then quickly launder it before it was recalled. Fortunately, this time. I bet his heart was racing during those moments. He's like, snap, bro, I've got to make sure I get this bag. <laughs> Abbas and his fellow money movers weren't able to move the millions quickly enough, and the bank was able to recover most of the missing funds. Snap, they caught on. When the story hit the news, Olimary took a screenshot and sent it to Abbas. He replied simply, damn. Not to be put off, Olimary sent back, next one is in a few weeks, we'll let you know when it's ready. Dang, it takes uh, weeks to set this up, guys. Too bad they caught on, or it would have been a nice payout. Similarly unfazed, Abbas took to Instagram the next day, posing head-to-toe in Fendi and leaning on a $160,000 sports car. Bought myself a new Bentley Bentayga for Valentine's, the best way to celebrate the season of love. Dang, bro. <laughs> so much. Unfortunately for Abbas, not everyone in his network was as laid back as he and Alamari. In another scam, he'd been working with a Kenyan entrepreneur named Juma to con a Qatari business person out of $1.1 million. This person had hoped to set up... Dang, trying to scam the, the rich freaking guys at the UAE, man. ...a new school in Qatar and needed a $15 million loan to fund the project. As this was just a bit more than his local bank was willing to lend, he hired a financial advisor, who promptly googled million dollar loans and landed on Juma's scam website. Together, Juma and Abbas assumed false identities and spent months convincing the businessman that they could arrange the loan for various six-figure fees. Every time their victim became worried about the money not materializing, Abbas and Juma would double down and demand yet more cash, which would finally release the loan. In a final ploy, they hired Vincent Chibuzu to set up a fake Wells Fargo website Dude, this is elaborate, bro. I wonder if they told him to go to the website or just found it on like a Google search. Huh? Like, uh, An I, I'm not sure exactly, but... Made it hotline. When the businessman rang it, he was informed that the $15 million was finally in his account and he was over the moon. However, he was soon brought back down to earth when Abbas requested a $575,000 withholding tax to get the money out of the US. At this point, Shibuzu started petitioning for a larger share. When Abbas shut him down, he went to the client and exposed the scam. Naturally, Abbas was more than a little upset. No, uh -oh. he's not gonna like that, man. So he messaged a man named Abba Kiari, saying he wanted Chibuzu to go through the most serious beating of his life. What was interesting? Nah, bro, this is like some scammer mafia kind of thing, bro. Thing about this is that Kiari wasn't a thug. He was Nigeria's multi-award winning deputy police commissioner, otherwise known as Super Cop, the shining example of competence and incorruptibility within a heavily criticized system. But Abbas's message wasn't history's worst missed text. He'd actually intended to request a beating for hire from the Super Cop and followed up with, please sir, I want to spend money to send this boy to jail. Let him go for a very long time. Shockingly, Yari was more than happy to oblige and replied with the deep wait so they're gonna let him uh just they're gonna try to build like a bigger case or something guys details of a nigerian bank account when the money arrived he arrested chibuzu and sent a picture of him locked up he even updated abbas after chibuzu's girlfriend arrived with a bribe to have him freed they were thinking it's a normal arrest that is why they think money can remove him he wrote no money can remove him here ha 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 there's no bail on that one, guys. I wonder if the girlfriend got arrested as well. Those puppies downfall. 
The ironic thing about Abbas is that, as a money launderer, his job was to make cash look as if it came from a legitimate source. But this was something he massively overlooked in his own life. His it's gonna be so hard, man. Pursuit of likes and desire to show off his newfound wealth meant that flaunting it on Instagram was just too. T like, where, where would you take? Like, he's doing it all online. Where would you be taking uh, those private jets, guys? Or more like picture photo shoots? At this point, it seems tempting. And among his 2.8 million followers were more than a few agents working to bring him down. Unsurprisingly, the FBI had become suspicious that the source of Hush Puppy's fortune wasn't legit. But they didn't really know who he was. That was until his birthday, when he posted a picture of the gifted cake he received from Gucci. Uh oh, that, that's one way to find out. Armed with his date, I thought they could just go through Instagram, but. At birth, agents were able to track him to a visa application which led to his true identity and a much clearer look at his finances. It quickly became obvious that he was a prolific money launderer, and they placed him under surveillance, hoping to gather something concrete to use for his arrest. Ultimately, the crime that brought him down was one of his most successful, the payout from the New York law firm. After the 922 k hit the Chase bank account in October 2019, Abbas worked quickly to split it up sending 396000 to a Canadian account. Then, he asked Alamari to confirm that it- Gosh, that's so much money, man. That's uh, enough to, like... That's enough to buy a house, basically. It had arrived. Alamari replied that it had, but his plane had just landed, and he'd have to wait until he had a good enough signal to send a screenshot. Then, just moments later, as he walked into the airport, the FBI descended on him, and he was placed under arrest. The next day, dang it, bro, he's like, oh, I'm screwed. The jig's up. No more living lavish for sure. Abbas's old friend Momfa was also arrested at a Nigerian airport by the EFCC and charged with fraud and money laundering. At this point, still got that Dior on when it's when it happened. It looks like Abbas should have disappeared. After all, the FBI now had full access to Alamari's Snapchat which was full of evidence and directly linked to rayhushpuppy at gmail.com. But incredibly, using a, a good old Gmail account for everything, he seemed unconcerned and continued posting pictures of Fendi bags and hot tubs to his Instagram. His only evasive tactic was to change his bio from billionaire Gucci master to real estate developer. Meanwhile, the FBI began coordinating with the UAE is still posting a uh, Snapchat as well. Authorities near where Abbas was staying and launched surveillance. Then, on June 8th, 2020, while Abbas was sleeping, a Dubai SWAT team flooded into his apartment, placed him under arrest, and seized 47 phones, 21 laptops, seven million dollars worth of. Dang, bro, he knows what he's doing. 47, 21 lap. Oh my gosh. Luxury cars, 40 million dollars and the email addresses of two million potential victims. The Dubai authorities were so pleased with the successful haul that they released a short, stylized film of the arrest entitled Operation Fox Hunt 2. Soon, Abbas was flown to Chicago, where he stood trial in November 2022. He pleaded guilty to his crimes against the Qatari businessperson, the Maltese bank, and several others that amounted to over $24 million. Damn, bro, he just pleaded guilty. He knew he, was, uh, he wasn't going to win the case. He was sentenced to 135 months in federal prison and ordered to pay over $1.7 million in restitution. Officials described him as, quote, one of the most prolific money launderers in the world. I, I didn't even know about this at all, guys. And his longtime doubters gloated. The cops got a nice sneaker collection now. And no more Gucci in jail. Facts, bro. Facts, bro. I haven't seen like a prison video from him. Let's see. This wasn't Instagram. He didn't do any scamming on Instagram. He was a scammer who happened to be on Instagram. That's true. <laughs> Wealth is silent, which is loud, poor is flashy. It's amazing how they take people down for the same mess they do on a daily basis. Hmm. The extent to which people scam amazes me. How can people come together and agree to do to doing such things is mind blowing. Yeah, guys, that's our video. Thanks for watching. Check out uh, the original video in the description. And I'll see you guys next one.